Kentucky. And good morning. I have a question for you today. And as everyone knows, I like to ask questions. I think questions are really wonderful. And when you hear the answers, wow, sometimes you learn more than you expect to. But the question I have for you today, those of you out there in visual land on the web, what are you doing on the web? Are you happy with what you're doing and accomplishing or not accomplishing on the web? I can tell you that I still struggle with some of that. I used to know it a long time ago, but I uh, have discovered that there's so much new content and ways to do things that I said, let me get Holly Claire to come and talk with us because she is the social media advisor and she has had a virtual support business since 2003. Claire Communications is the overall reaching um, business that Holly runs and has run for 15 years, Holly. Is that what you told me? Yes. Oh, golly, golly. Um, <laughs> he also, one of the things that we're going to talk about when we talk about reinvention and, and some of the other uh, topics here is the fact that Holly knew she needed some training in LinkedIn, so she went out and got it. And so, Holly, I am just a big fan, a big fan, and I have been watching you as you've built some of the social media advisor um, content, but you post, you recently post on LinkedIn about images and naming your images. Yes. And so um, that is one of the things that Holly can help you with, and one of the things you need to learn, but you posted about it, and you wrote a post about it. And so I want to welcome you to Nurturing Big Ideas today. I'm Yvonne DeVita, the Big Idea Facilitator. But today with Holly Claire, we're going to talk about social media and reinvention. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. So Holly, you are a good friend from Colorado. Yes. <laughs> people on the show have been from Blog Pause, but I, I am so blessed to have met some smart people in Colorado. Holly, talk to me about being online, getting clients by word of mouth, and how you continue to improve and learn and share. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so good to see you. Uh, we really miss you here in Colorado, by the way. Uh, Online is one of those unique tools where you can actually really build a solid relationship with your followers by telling your story. So as you see the, the background of what my video is here, it's all about fun, color, education, and that's what I want to, I want to provide as much value as possible to my audience. And I figure at the end of the day, if I'm providing value to someone and that is the most that they were able to receive from me and it served them in the best way possible, then I've, my job is complete. Um, I do get introductions, leads, and opportunities all the time just because of how my profile is built and how I'm coming up in search results. And it's actually been a thing ever since way back in the day, maybe nine and a half years ago when I first created my LinkedIn account. Actually, I think it might be 10 years now. Um, LinkedIn's been around for much longer than that. I knew that if I wanted to become top of mind and be cutting edge in the business space of social media, I needed to learn. So I attended workshops from everyone that I could, that I trusted, and everyone had the same message. Build your profile out robustly, create content to build consistency and value, and start having conversations with people offline. Because when you're building those relationships, they will become your biggest fans. They will follow your content. They will know when you share something about naming your images. And then, you know, magic happens from there. So, yeah, it's uh, that one particular topic that you mentioned is very, very valuable because you can have a really nicely built and written bio and create beautifully written posts with a lot of value and blogs with just well, well spoken. SEO rich, but at the end of the day, if you're not creating your own images and naming them properly, you're missing out on an opportunity for search results there as well. So I've learned a ton from all sorts of experts. I fangirl all the social media people out there who have been really successful and connect as often as I can, 
constantly learning. I feel that I'm a, I'm a forever student. And so, you know, if there's, if there's a methodology that makes sense and it takes me out of my comfort zone, I'm going to try it. That's so awesome. Um, I want to get into what you mean by naming, because when um, there are some women who are still learning a lot of this, they just don't really know how to um, go about using the internet. But before we go there, you said something really important. You said not just connecting online, but getting together offline. And I've always been a big proponent of that. Um, I keep telling people, get out of your chair and go to events or, or whatever like that. You actually have a whole team that you've built up. And I think that you probably started meeting them and discovering that this was a good idea by going to those offline events. Tell us Absolutely. about some offline events that you attend that really help you in your business. Absolutely. So yes, every single one of the people I work with is local to Colorado. Uh, most importantly, because I want to be able to sit belly to belly with them and celebrate and strategize together. And we have met through a lot of different things. My, my key content writer actually was a Girl Scout troop leader at the same time I was in our service unit together. And she did the communications for the service unit. So we started connecting through there. And it was our outside events as leaders that really had, had us build our relationships and learn more about each other. And that was the key. That's the key wherever it's personal or professional. Start learning what people like to do and go out and do those things. I've tried on a variety of different things. Um, really excited because I feel like this summer we're going to be able to, to gather a group up and try axe throwing. It's something I've never done, wow. right? I mean, why not? I've done paintball. I've painted things. We've, uh, it's, it's all about connecting with people who have similar interests. So at these networking events and luncheons, I'll tend to ask questions, not only business related, you know, who is someone that would be an ideal client for you, but taking it further. Do you have family? Do you have kids? What do you guys like to do on your free time? And actually, if you can incorporate some of those fun things in your bio, you can get found in that way as well. So as you're wanting to connect to other people who craft or like to hike, which are two things that I love doing, those are easy conversation starters. So it's not that uncomfortable handshake and then tell me what you do for a living. Tell me what you like to do every day. What fills your soul? And the conversation just happens a lot easier and you become more top of mind because you've connected on something personal. I love it. I love it. So one of the things that speaks to me when I hear that is that um, what you're doing, I think, is treating the other person like a person first and maybe a professional, whatever, next. And when we do that, when we look at each other as people, you're a people, I'm a people, or what do people like to do? Um, it really does build relationships. And we've talked about this, I say we, and I mean you, me, and many, many other people. We've talked about relationship building for many, many years. But it's not, it's not as well understood or... Um, people, especially people starting out, uh, young women, women my age, who well, I'm a baby boomer, they want to do it, but they're either afraid, they don't know where to go to do it, and they don't know how to do it. So it's, it's very much needed um, to do that. So I love this. I love it. And I hope when people are listening and watching that they kind of embrace that whole, well, it's, it's more just talking about life. It isn't always talking about, you know, so what do you do for a living? Yes. I mean, you yes. and I met and we talked and I love it when I see you talk about your girls and your family because it makes me feel close to you, even though you're in Colorado and I'm in New York. Um, so let's go back, Holly, to the images. And I want to go back there because when I read that post and when I saw it on LinkedIn and I liked it and made a comment, uh, it, it spoke to me because I thought, gee, a lot of women I know might think she wants me to um, give my image a name like, oh, this is um, image 22 about my house or whatever. And it's a little bit more detailed than that, right? It's absolutely more detailed than that. So the best example of 
what this could look like for you is think about how you go online to Google and how you search. And we go online every day, we look for things. When we click on the images tab in Google, all sorts of images come up with that theme. You know, if I want to find a quote from Oprah Winfrey or Stephen Jobs, I'm going in there, I'm looking, and it pulls up all these beautiful, already created images with these quotes, and I can read it and everything else. Well, so what they've done is they've named these images so that they can be found. So the creator may have called it uh, Oprah Winfrey quote about living life. And when it saved that, when you've created an image of your own, not necessarily down, downloaded one from Google, because there's fines and things that can get associated with that. You want to create an image of your own where if you're quoting someone else, you reference their name because they, they said it originally. Don't ever plagiarize, right? You want to mm-hmm. give them credit where credit is due. But you can make it fun in, in your themes and colors to fit your branding and call it that. So when you're thinking about selling your services or pr- promoting them or talking about images to, to uh, share in social media, think about that same naming convention because PSI 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever, isn't going to make it searchable. And so you're just missing the, the opportunity in that post where if you created a post and you were talking about value and relationships and women empowerment and actually named your image women empowerment and then whatever other nuggets, I mean, you want to keep it concise, right? Whatever other nuggets you want to include in that, that will make your image searchable, not only in Facebook, but in LinkedIn, in Google and other places if it's shared. So, so so what about, um, how important are images? I mean, that's the other tricky thing. It, it, we don't, I used to shy away from all of this because I, um, oh my gosh, my daughter Chloe would, would come and say, mom, that image is awful. Take it down. I'm like, oh, but, but I like it. It's so cute. But uh, so people might shy away from images altogether. I love that you said your images, for instance. So I tend now to take pictures when I'm out walking the dog. I take pictures uh, when I'm in the car and those are pictures I know I can use because I own them. However, it is a visual, the web is a visual medium. So what is your advice to people who don't know how to take pictures? Yeah, you don't have to use pictures you've taken. You can actually have license agreement with uh, platforms such as Canva, canva canva.com. When you create an account there, you, you are signing up for their license agreement. There are over a million different images that are already populated in there for you to be able to select from. Some platforms will chart, and Canva also has a service where they charge, where it's a dollar to two dollars, depending on how you want to use it. Um, a lot of images are free, but they even have templates for you to be able to create your branded meme. And so you can adjust the fonts and the colors and just use those things without having to take all of your own images. That's a really great tool. There's tons of tools for I've, I've heard of Pixel, I've heard of Graphic mm-hmm. Stock, and, and all sorts of those. The biggest thing is if it says it's free, it's not always free. So make sure that you have a license agreement with whatever organization you're downloading the images from mm-hmm. that give you permission to be able to use it. And I love that. That, yeah. that is great advice. And I, I want women who are watching to understand that you don't take images from other people without crediting or even asking. I have in the past asked and um, several times someone has said, no, those are mine. And I have to respect that. I have to say, okay, thank you for at least getting back to me and letting me know. But the, in the end, all the content on someone else's site belongs to someone else. Don't think, I remember um, Holly probably five or six years ago, someone was sending me something with an image or, or I saw uh, it on, on their website. And I said, where did you get that image? Because I kind of knew that it wasn't theirs. Oh, I found it here at XYZ site. And you know, I'm like, did you ask permission to use that? Well, no, it's on the internet. Everything on the internet is free. No, it's not. You know, I actually have, I was fined. So I know from personal experience that it, it can become a hefty thing. Mm -hmm. 
legally, anybody who owns the copyright to an image and loads it in any place, it will, every social platform will ask you, do you have permission to load images here? Especially Instagram and Pinterest, because people are taking images from those places all oh, the time. Right. Yes. And they, they do have you click and, and approve that, yes, in fact, you do own them. I downloaded an image that I saw on Google, and it's actually one that I have over here. And I printed it. It's, I love it because I printed it. And I'm like, oh, I need to use this in my social media. And it talked about being awesome in some sort of way. And I used it in LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter. I used it on my website. I used it in a variety of different ways. It's just one of those, you know, be really fun personally to be able to have it printed up and what, who, who would know? Well, there's IP addresses tied to every single image that's created. And they not only found where I shared it, but they found every place I shared it because of that IP address that was originated from them. I got a $900 per use fine. That was seven times times $900. And people can approach you with that in a variety of different denominations and amounts. It just, they have the, the ability to keep track of that. And that's the other thing. It's free, the internet, but there's data that's tied behind every single one and zero, whether it's an image or text. Mm. And so, yeah, protect yourself, create. That's why it's so good to take pictures. And even just starting with those walks with the dog, Let's take some pictures of some flowers that I see along the way. Yeah. Let's take some pictures of the sun. Like, look at the clouds. And you can take that picture of clouds and put your own quote right over it and use that in social media. And you should add a copyright. I, I know a lot of, we did yeah. not do this back in the day, but I see it more often now. And I try to at least add my URL or something that identifies that image as mine. But to your point, there are free image places. You can just search Google for free image um, sources and you will find them and even those um, offer uh, identification of, of who the author was and it's polite even if it says free to use it's polite to use the author's name and say this is where it came from this is who who created that image but so when it comes to um, social media tell us what you think or how you um, teach your clients how to use social media because gosh, Holly, I, I can't do, I, my head explodes. It's like, how do I do Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn? And how do I do it? Yes. Well, first I, I like to kind of explain the best ways to use them and then figure out where their clients are. So I will say, you know what? YouTube is a great place to house your videos, whether you're doing them in Facebook Live or Instagram. So long as you can download the video, you can upload it to YouTube, right? Yes. Um, Pinterest is a great place to share your blogs, to share the, the memes that you're creating, to share your videos as well. A nice another place to house them if it's convenient. Mm -hmm. Twitter is a really great place for news. I tend to watch I watch the debates on there. I will go online if there's a traffic issue and see what kind of traffic's going on. But I also will know that if I'm in an event, I'm probably gonna get the most activity in Twitter if I'm using their hashtags and so forth. So just kind of downloading the different uses of each, Instagram being more image friendly, Facebook being more conversational, LinkedIn being more professional. And then we figure out not to create a, a presence in each platform, you can absolutely reserve your username in each platform just in case one day down the road you might want to try on Pinterest later or Twitter later but I recommend starting with one or two mm -hmm. making them really really awesome developing a system and a routine with those and then adding something else and for even some people who who tell me that they're technology challenged all right so let's even go simpler let's start with one platform Let's get you familiar with navigating, having conversations, commenting, reading your reports, looking at your, your numbers, and then we can add on something else later. And because it becomes easier if you, once you do one, yes? It is, because you've already built that routine, you've got a system going, you know what to post, you know how the system works, then let's add on something else for you to learn. It doesn't make sense, I, you know, years ago, Social media people were like, secure everything in every single place. And a lot of people did, which is great. 
I believe you should have your username secured in all platforms if possible. Mm -hmm. Let's do that, but let's not start building an, an activity and presence and have it linked off of our website if we're not actually using it. Yeah, I, I like that. And I think, I hope people will connect. You will um, see more information on how to connect with Holly in the blog and on, on YouTube. But um, absolutely, people should take heed that, that you don't know everything. I don't know everything. So who can you talk to in these different areas of building your business? I think Social Media Advisor with Holly Claire is a great place to go. She also has, again, the team that we mentioned. And that's one of the things that I recommend also is that you partner with other people, is that you look at the big picture and what you can't do, you can find someone who does. And if it's going to help you, then you partner. So Holly, this has been a really, really informative, smart conversation today. I hope we can do it again because we just kind of touched the surface of things and there's so much more that people could learn um, from you and from social media in general. So we're going to wrap it up today. Thank you, Holly, for being on Smart Conversations. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, I appreciate it. We you. will uh, be in touch because down the road I want to create series because I think many of these topics require more than one visit. And oh, I would love to. I, I will um, be in touch and then I will rely on you to tell me how you want that to be. But wouldn't that be great to have Holly come back and do a series with us? I appreciate your time today, Holly. Thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Thank you for everything. Yes. <laughs>